Good morning, folks. We've got all sorts of news here today. Sun playing with fire on the northeastern limb, a preposterously undamaging massive earthquake, update on a key climate team, a new cosmology topic, and a deeper look at suspiciousobservers.org. But first, we're coming to spaceweathernews.com to find that while the northeast plasma filament extension was the prettiest feature on the sun the last day, the active regions and southern coronal holes are where the sun can affect our planet now. It turns out that the southern coronal holes did push an intensified stream. Orange density rises slightly, and as it drops out, we then see purple plasma speed and green plasma temperature rise up. While the impact is clearly seen here, top speed mark didn't hit 500 kilometers per second. It is a weak to moderate stream so far, so the geomagnetic activity resulting from it is weak to moderate. So folks, we do have Sakurajima in Japan clearing his throat a little, while the Caribbean fault lines slip on a banana. Titanic 7.7 earthquake with a strong aftershock nearby. Shook most of the Caribbean actually and even up to Miami, but there are no reports of death or serious damage. It may be the largest earthquake ever, this close to the surface, to leave no major impact. People were stunned but easily able to pick themselves back up off the ground. And while Daddy Duty kept the human forecast from presenting the night before, we did have two blot echoes nearby within the three-day window. OLR and solar polar fields are expected to update today, so we'll be looking for those signals in atmospheric and solar indices tonight. Moving on to an excellent blog article from a weather expert showing how the currently abysmal U.S. forecasting models might be able to take advantage of an opportunity to improve. There is a reason why so many U.S. studies do not use U.S. models. They are just bad. Excellent article is linked below and in that climate and weather realm. Who here doesn't remember the mutiny that started it all? The team from Princeton who shook up the climate story in late 2017, spurning a surge of such proclamations from scientists across the world. But what have they themselves been up to? Well, just last month they got a paper into climate dynamics a lot of confirmation of their previous claims and a bit of forward-looking projection. But their real gem the last few years was not allowed in a proper journal. They had to put it on Cornell's preprint archive. I wonder if the trouble with that one was that it not only blamed the sun-cloud interaction for the uncertainties, but tied them to both the global warming pause and decadal cycles in weather, which are driven by the sunspot cycle. They learned fast that just because you profess at Princeton, doesn't mean you get to slash the global elite's propaganda machine. And so they quietly and covertly continue their mutiny in non-obvious critiques and tweaks of the current paradigm. Looking to nearby galaxies, astronomers are seeing that the cores and interior bulges appear not to be newer features coming with the galaxies we're observing, but remnants of formation much, much earlier, perhaps even from the first galaxies in the universe. Now this is not only a fascinating story about a galactic phoenix-like behavior over cosmic time, but it may throw a wrench into mainstream cosmic time lines as well. And that brings us to our last article today. And for as often as the senyayev zeldovich effect shows up in astrophysical and cosmic literature, we should probably go take a look at what it is. What it is is they're focused on the stripping away of everything except the cosmic microwave background from a look at the heavens, and they're looking for the cooler returns. When there are distant reservoirs of hot plasma, they tend to scatter and frequency shift the microwave photons out of that microwave range, which astronomers think means they can spot distant galaxies and clusters by tracking that hot plasma effect. Now, the core issue here is their correction for the second most important player in the correct cosmology, dust, and how it's missing that error adjustment causes you to underestimate the number one most important player, plasma, by up to 26% when using the senyayev zeldovich effect to try to guess how much material's out there. That is not exactly a tiny amount to be missing, and since that material is found within those plasma clusters affecting the microwaves, then we know it's more of the missing matter inside the systems they seek to describe, rather than spread out, diffuse, sparse, and random. Website member or not, I did not cue the member's protection for last night's Deeper Look episode, so anyone can come on over and click on episode 8 here on the year. It is simple, but it's almost 100% ignored as a practice, and this is one of the easiest ways I could ever think of to break new ground in the solar climate forcing realm, and I hope you agree. 
We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.